the world is on the brink of space war. One of the nuclear powers is preparing to deploy nuclear warheads into Earth's orbit. The explosion of just one of them will trigger an electromagnetic pulse that will disable up to a third of all satellites regardless of their country of origin. This will collapse communication systems on Earth, not to mention the debris swarms that will hinder the launch of new devices to replace those destroyed. All of this resembles the plot of a sci-fi action movie set in the near future. And yet, in February of 2024, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken himself warned about this real scenario. And even though placing strategic weapons in space was banned by an international treaty back in the late 60s, it seems that confrontations between our states will indeed spill beyond the planet's borders and stop being just a fantasy of sci-fi writers and video game developers. In this video, based on popular authors' predictions and scientifically grounded technologies, we'll try to figure out what the space wars of the future will actually look like. Our planet's orbit is a battlefield where the arms race has already begun, albeit unofficially. While Russia denies plans to deploy nuclear weapons in space, as reported by The Economist, Chinese documents speak of using surprise swift, limited-scale overawing strikes in space. In the meantime, the United States Space Force, established five years ago, is gearing up for a potential space Pearl Harbor. But what kind of outcome could an orbital war entail? Naturally, detailed plans on this matter are classified, but I bet that the military minds in any country are dreaming of a colossal space platform similar to the USS Nomad from the 2023 sci-fi flick The Creator. It could launch dozens of ballistic missiles from orbit to hit targets virtually anywhere on the planet's surface. Yet, the most fantastic aspect of Nomad isn't its size. It's the fact that in the future world portrayed by the authors, no country can do anything about this monster. In reality, though, if a simple ballistic missile launched from Earth explodes somewhere near the station, it would easily destroy it. Therefore, real orbital weapons platforms would be much smaller, and if one country starts deploying them, others will not lag behind. This would mean not only strikes from orbit onto our planet's surface, but also full-scale space battles. The first weapon tests of this kind were conducted on the Soviet Salyut 3 spacecraft in January of 1975. It was equipped with a heavy 14.5mm rapid-fire cannon able to achieve a rate of fire of around 5,000 rounds per minute. During the test, the cannon only fired around 20 shells at the old satellite. However, the results aren't mentioned even in declassified Soviet documents. Most likely, the results were disappointing because the recoil from the cannon in zero gravity could seriously throw a small satellite off its course. Besides, spacecraft designed for near-Earth missions move along vastly different trajectories and much faster than regular bullets. In other words, hitting an enemy satellite or weapon platform is almost impossible. The only practical option for orbital combat in the near future is lasers. They could not only promptly shoot down missiles launched from orbital platforms, but also destroy those missiles with a single hit to a vulnerable spot. Plus, lasers don't need ammunition, only energy. One of the ground prototypes of such a weapon was tested in 2022 by the American company Lockheed Martin. With a power of 300 kilowatts, it was enough to destroy a cruise missile. However, no manufacturer is currently able to make laser systems compact enough to launch them into orbit. 
The most efficient ones have a chemical energy source which requires bulky batteries. But with further miniaturization, laser battles in orbit targeting enemy satellites and missile platforms may well become a reality. But let's take a peek into an even more distant future, the era of the wars for the solar system. Such conflicts are vividly and very realistically depicted in James S. A. Corey's book series The Expanse and its TV adaptation of the same name. By the mid-24th century, humanity has already colonized Mars, large asteroids, and even some of Jupiter's moons like Ganymede, leading to a split. Mars has gained independence from Earth, and the population of space stations and asteroids is striving to establish itself as a new nation called the Belters. All this results in a three-sided conflict for access to valuable resources and, of course, battles, considered some of the most realistic examples of space combat in television history. Since enemy ships need to reach strategic locations in interplanetary space not in months like our current ships, but in a matter of hours, they use the Epstein Drive. It's based on real nuclear fusion technology, which is still under development. The energy produced in this way efficiently converts water into plasma, and this exhaust can propel a ship to speeds of up to 10,000 kilometers per second, which is over 3% of the speed of light. However, sharp combat maneuvers with such significant accelerations of over 10 G would cause the people on board to lose consciousness or even die. That's why crews use the so-called gravity fluids, helping the body cope with stress. Similar solutions are already used in emergency medicine to stabilize critically ill patients. Despite this, in the expanse, you won't see any cool space lasers, the descendants of today's military developments. After all, unlike Earth's orbit, where targets can be thousands of kilometers apart, distances in the solar system are measured in millions, meaning that even a super-powerful laser beam would inevitably disperse. Instead, interplanetary battles start with the launch of long-range missiles with Epstein drives. Since they are uncrewed and resistant to overload, they can catch up with almost any crewed ship. And yet, even these hypersonic projectiles may need half an hour to hit a target at long distances. That's why it's crucial to quietly approach the opponent as close as possible and only then release the first missile salvo. Advanced stealth technology allowed the Martian Republic to create a military fleet capable of gaining an advantage over Earth's forces in open space. Nevertheless, even if you're attacked by multiple missiles, there's still hope, as they can be shot down by anti-aircraft guns, which seem to be upgraded versions of that Soviet rapid-fire cannon. And since we're dealing with very high speeds, there's no need to worry about recoil. When the distance between opponents is reduced, a powerful railgun able to pierce through any ship will come into play. With the help of magnetic coils, this weapon accelerates a tiny projectile to half the speed of light, or even more. Trying to use it to hit a moving target from afar is like trying to shoot down a satellite with a sniper rifle. But up close, the railgun won't miss. The U.S. Navy tested a similar magnetic superweapon back in 2017. According to preliminary estimates, such a railgun would be able to destroy floating targets beyond the line of sight and even beyond Earth's horizon at distances of up to 100 nautical miles or 185 kilometers. When further developed, this technology will surely come in handy in outer space. Although, if we venture beyond the solar system, the war will get even bigger. 
you might already be picturing epic space battles like those in EVE Online, where fleets controlled by thousands of players clash regularly. But beyond this remarkably realistic simulation of space warfare of the future, there's a less obvious scenario of interstellar conflict that could cost us all dearly. This space war will not require any ships at all. If some hostile civilization inhabits the nearest star system, Proxima Centauri, situated just over four light years away, even the fastest ships with Epstein drives from the Expanse need more than four centuries to cover this distance. Therefore, the advanced neighbors might attempt a powerful long-range strike against Earth. The motivation for this was persuasively laid out by Chinese writer Liu Cixin in his cult novel The Dark Forest. According to the eponymous scientific hypothesis, all developed civilizations in space will inherently view each other as an existential threat because communication between different intelligent species is too complex and cannot guarantee honesty. It's much easier to deliver a devastating blow to the enemy first, as in this way, you ensure your own survival. But what kind of weapon can overcome the large distances between stars? The most obvious option physicists have already considered is relativistic rockets. In other words, projectiles that can accelerate to at least half or up to 90% of the speed of light, but then will have to use extremely rare and therefore very valuable antimatter as fuel. Back in the 70s, two physicists, Robert Frisbee and Ulrich Walter, independently proposed an engine in which protons and antiprotons would be constantly annihilated. And this reaction, besides gamma rays, would produce pions, massive particles that would reach speeds of up to 93% of the speed of light. In theory, if enough antimatter is used, such an engine would indeed accelerate rockets to relativistic speeds. In practice, this means that they would reach Earth from Proxima Centauri in just five years. On top of that, since they're traveling almost as fast as light, we'd notice them too late to do anything. And it's just because of their immense kinetic energy that even not very massive rockets may cause much more destruction than giant killer comets. Almost all life on Earth, except perhaps extreme bacteria, will perish from the shockwave or suffocate from the dust. Yet, this isn't even the worst case scenario. If the enemies have managed to become a Type II civilization on the Kardashev scale, that is, enveloped its star with a Dyson sphere for maximum energy extraction, then why not aim it at us? Even our scientists have already developed a scheme for transmitting and accumulating solar energy in space using microwaves. Alien generals will only need to connect it to a giant focusing platform and press the button. If this laser is as wide as Earth, it won't have enough time to disperse sufficiently in outer space, and upon hitting our planet, it'll instantly boil the oceans and melt the Earth's crust. If the discharge of the super laser keeps our planet in focus for 12 hours, it'll entail a full-blown lava apocalypse and total sterilization of life. If the attackers want to preserve Earth for further colonization, they'll opt for a high-energy beam of particles like protons, just like those we already create in the Large Hadron Collider, only on a much grander scale. Its impact on Earth will be equivalent to plunging all life into a molten Chernobyl reactor, total genocide with preserving the hospitable surface. How wise of them. But if we and our enemies have already colonized many star systems at the time of the conflict, it won't end after just one devastating strike. 
we have every chance of witnessing a real galactic war, much like the one happening right now in the virtual world of EVE Online. Here, the battlefield is a gigantic cluster of star systems called New Eden, spanning an area of 106 by 90 by 25 light years. Waging warfare on such immense territories is only possible thanks to faster than light travel technology. All combat ships are equipped with warp drives similar to those currently being theorized by NASA. However, it's easy to imagine that thousands of years from now, this space warping technology will allow us to accelerate up to 15,000 times faster than light. Although even this is insufficient on a galactic scale, so to swiftly move fleets to distant star systems, commanders utilize a gate system with artificial wormholes. These spatial tunnels for instantaneous jumps over long distances are created by a special gravitational resonance which only occurs in binary star systems. In other words, the wormholes do not cover the entire New Eden. So, ships still have to reach their destination using conventional warp drives. But before that happens, enemies can set up ambushes using warp disruption technology. Battles here are always up close and personal, meaning ships are directly within each other's line of sight and can use laser weapons, missiles, and short-range drones. Close quarters combat in space is typically considered unrealistic, but in EVE Online, it's totally possible if you think about it. Unlike in The Expanse, where ships move slower than light and can be detected and targeted in advance, nothing is stopping superluminal fleets of New Eden from jumping straight into the thick of battle. But what exactly are the sides fighting for? Curiously enough, on a galactic scale, everything starts to resemble old-fashioned Earth Wars. For instance, a large player alliance with a very eloquent name, the Imperium, decided to expand into systems with valuable resources that generate a regular profit. Moreover, its representatives began collecting tribute from smaller alliances and corporations in exchange for leaving them alone. All these funds were then used to build citadels, gigantic space stations. Essentially, these are strategic military bases. Just one of them ensures control over an entire star system. However, ultimately, the actions of the Imperium angered everyone around them so much that even former enemies united against them. The conflict culminated in the siege of the Keepstar Citadel by Allied forces in one of the key systems for the Imperium. Even though the defenders managed to set up a warp disruption on the approaches and destroy or delay over 300 attackers, 5,337 ships of various classes still broke through to the strategic point, all piloted by real people in real time. The fierce, uncompromising battle for the Citadel lasted more than six hours. During this time, hundreds of salvos from the so-called doomsday weapons of super-capital ships rained down upon the Citadel. These are the most powerful energy weapons in New Eden, whose force can be compared to that of an atomic bomb. As a result, the defense of Keepstar did not hold, and the symbol of the Imperium's strength erupted, illuminating space with a brightness akin to dozens of suns. Over 4,000 ships were destroyed in the battle, although their experienced pilots survived. That's because, in EVE Online, those at the helm are not ordinary people, but Capsuleers clones, which are basically impossible to kill. Nevertheless, this defeat dealt a serious blow to the prestige of the Imperium, and yet the wars for dominance in New Eden continued. Truth be told, in EVE Online, they're never-ending. And what do you think the wars of the future will be like?